Yeah, a tough loss. Very difficult uh, to put into words. Um, I appreciate the, the fight by our football team. Uh, it's been that way for uh, the last several weeks. A lot of heart. Um, one of the most resilient teams I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, we've been down before. We've been counted out before, and uh, guys just continue to keep believing in each other, keep staying by each other, and playing the game the way that it's meant to be played. Uh, tough for me to find the words uh, to share with a group of young men in the locker room that are uh, taking off their helmet and shoulder pads for the final time. I just simply uh, I love them. I love everything that uh, they put into our program over the years. It's been a joy for me to see their growth and development, whether they've been here for one year, two, three, or anything more than that. And um, it's a, it's a first-class uh, group of young men, and um, the effort was there. Um, you know, a, th a thing here, uh, one play here, one play there. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we weren't, weren't able uh, to come away with the win there. But um, um, I give credit to Miami. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, they found a way uh, to get it done in the end, and, and we were not able to do that. So. Uh, just, you know, the only way you can come back from any kind of adversity in your life or any time you're down and out, you just simply have to work hard. you got to get back up off the mat. I encouraged all the young men in there uh, to do that. You know, there's a fine line uh, in this conference between winning and losing. It's very competitive uh, from top to bottom, and you got to be great at the little things. We preach the details a lot uh, because that's what it takes. Uh, when you want to win and you want to do that consistently in this conference, you got to be good at the details, and it starts with work. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a long process and in, in college football when you only guarantee 12 games the, the process starts in January and you got to attack every day uh, with, with an effort that's unknown to mankind uh, and that's the only way to have success and uh, I love the group of young men in there and um, you know they got to pick it up pick up their chin and um, you got to move forward and I'm super thankful for having an opportunity to be involved in the life of um, all these young men, but in particular today, the, the 25 guys that are uh, taking the field for the last time and just took a minute, wanted to make sure they all knew that I loved them and they know how to get in touch with, in touch with me, whatever I can do uh, to help them. So um, tough day and, and uh, just got to keep our chin up. Coach, as far as a game like this goes, you know, this just was a roller coaster, especially in the second half. You know, defense made some big plays, offense just ran into some trouble, you know, a block kick, things like that. And you've been in games like this before. Um, what are the emotions that come with that? The game ebbs and flows. I think we knew going into it that it was going to be a four-quarter game. We knew that for 60 minutes that we had to bring our best effort, and we had to be physical uh, for 60 minutes. And the game was going to be good at some points. It was going to be down. It was going to be everywhere uh, in between. That's the style, really, of these two teams right now. You're talking about two of the you know, top defensive teams, if you will, that have been really playing great football, especially in conference. Uh, so we knew it was going to be a slugfest. And, um, you know, it, it came down to that. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate uh, that, uh, you know, you, you're right there, you score a touchdown, it gets called back, and you go from the highest of highs to the immediate lowest of lows. And that's part of football um, and uh, part of life. Uh, just have to figure out a way to, to bounce back from that. And uh, it's never easy. Um, but now I believe in the guys in that locker room down there, and um, we'll all be there for each other. Uh, that's that's the thing that you know everybody's got to know that uh, you know they, they got a great brotherhood in there, and we're all going to be the, be be there for each other through thick and thin. Uh, one of the best defenses in the MAC like throughout the season statistically, um, and again came up clutch today. And you've talked about kind of the strain and the effort that they put in throughout the season. Um, I mean, you have to be overall pleased with the defense this year. Oh, I think really the strength of our football team, and I think going back to when we started, you know, I talked about you know going to work in January for the next season. I think going back to January, we felt really strong uh, about the front seven, that group of guys that have played a lot of football for a lot of years and got a lot of snaps under their belt. We knew that there was going to be a couple of additions, which ended up being phenomenal uh, on the back end. Some of the, the key losses that we had, uh, three guys that end up going to the NFL, and you know certainly it looks on paper those are big holes and they are uh, but some of the young men that came in here and the way they transitioned into our program and just went about going to work uh, the right way so 
I think all year long, especially starting in conference, that first game of the year in conference against Western, and we had a couple turnovers that certainly didn't help in terms of uh, that game, but you just talk about consistency week in, week out. Uh, the defense uh, did that at a high level uh, and always answered uh, the bell each and every week. Statistically today, too, like best overall rushing attack yeah. since 2019. Um, and it just seems like that's been the formula since Kyle's taken over. Um, but did you just feel like, again, a little bit to be desired on the passing end? Yeah, well, and I, you know, going into the game, you know, I set out and I set up here uh, on Tuesday. It was our first day going to work, and I laid out the challenge. They, they're the number one run defense in the league, challenge accepted. We were the number two run defense in the league, challenge accepted. And I think our guys answered the challenge, took it personal. The way we were able to run the football today for 274 yards uh, against the top rushing defense in our conference, uh, I think that speaks volumes about the execution of those guys up front. Coop running hard, Kyle running hard. Um, and that was awesome. You see both of those guys are you know at 136 yards at the end of the day. That's pretty awesome. And that the credit goes to those guys up front. And certainly those guys uh, made some plays. They have special ability and, and were able to get loose in the open field. And so, um, and then passing game, obviously, you know, I think every week, uh, you know, started out and we did a lot of good things and hit some throws there that, that built some confidence in the first half. And, you know, unfortunately down the stretch, we just, you know, weren't able to make a throw here and there. And um, you just go, you keep working on it. Everybody's got strengths and weaknesses and you just kind of, you know, keep, keep working on your strengths, but you got to attack your weaknesses and, you know, continue to find ways to get better. Yeah, I, I know it's early, obviously it's, I mean, it's not even the off season yet, but you think that's going to be a priority in the offseason, developing Kyle's passing ability? Yeah, always. At all. I'm a big believer. I'm a footwork guy. You know, everybody's – there's a lot of talented quarterbacks out there, but in order to be consistent in terms of locating the football, it all starts with your feet. And you've got to trust the rhythm and the timing, and you got to trust – that the guys up front are going to do their job. And so it all stems from that. I, I firmly believe it's not anything conceptually. We don't need – it all starts with footwork to build confidence, and then that leads to locating the ball more consistently because when you're playing college football, guys aren't always going to be open. you got to throw them open. Um, those are the things that uh, when you want to be a championship quarterback and you want to be consistent week in, week out, those are the areas that you got to attack. And there's going to be times when you have to throw the football, and uh, we just got to get better at that. You know, it's not a no secret there. And uh, the great thing is, is that uh, there's, there's, you know, Kyle is one of those guys that uh, loves work, uh, so he's not going to shy away from that at all. Uh, last thing for me, um, obviously, you talked a lot about the seniors, and something that I think is interesting about this class, or at least some of them, you know, not all of them, but a lot of these guys have been here over half of your time here. Yeah. They've been here five years, some of them. What are some of the relationships that you have with these seniors like? Uh, you know, it, it's it's tough to, to all put it into words in, a, in an interview after the last game here, but all I can simply say is I, I saw these some of these guys when they were uh, boys uh, when they came into our program and to see the growth and development and I take a lot of pride and you know when the parents drop them off here or their significant other or their coach drops them off here to begin their journey I always make the promise to them that they're going to be a better man by the time you pick them up. Sorry. And I feel strongly about that. I feel like we've raised some, raised some well-rounded uh, young men that uh, not only do you get judged by what happens on the football field, but you talk about being ready to attack life. And one thing I always talk about in recruiting is going to be a difference maker in the world. And there's some guys down there that are difference makers, and they're going to do well for themselves, whatever community they end up putting their feet in and wherever they end up living at or whatever is next for them and next chapter of life, they're going to be extremely successful. And uh, that makes me proud to say that. Coach. Um... Obviously, this season was up and down, uh, started off slow. Uh, how do you feel like you can kind of encapsulate the, the whole thing um, in the context of you know this season and your fingers? Yeah, I told this team yesterday. I uh, told the team last night, and I'm not, I'm not just this. And I've been around some some great teams and a resilient group of guys, but this really is one of the most resilient football teams that I've ever been around because things didn't look great early, and it'd be easy. Um, 
to, to, to maybe abandon the message uh, or abandon the work that it takes on the practice field and the meeting room to have a chance to win each and every week. And what makes me proud uh, is the guys just simply stuck together. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of negativity sometimes that's out there that, you know, can, can get you off course, whether it's on social media or whatever it is. And that's just part of life now. It's, it is the normal. Uh, but I'm just proud of the guys for just continuing to work hard every day, um, stay by each other's side because we all need each other. Um, I just I'm proud of the effort. I'm proud of the way the game, you know, guys were playing with consistency, especially the last half of the season. Uh, proud of that. Uh, we once we kind of established an identity and what we were going to be about offensively, and then you just saw the guys grow and get better. And um, it's a good conference. It's a tough conference, and you got to be able to win. Um, you know, you got to be good at all the little things. You got to be good at all the details in order to have a chance to win each and every week. You with that identity change. Success. Um, are you guys, as a staff, willing to kind of commit to being that kind of team next year too? Which is, I guess, a little bit of a departure than what you guys have been. Yeah, I mean. We want to win football games. That's the most important thing at the end of the day. So once you take a deep dive and you start to scout yourself and what it's going to take uh, to be able to win each and every week, what is the best way to get that done? Obviously, we had some young men that missed the season this year uh, from injury that would certainly uh, go a long way towards help, helping balance out or making our, our passing game a little bit stronger. You can't do it all by yourself. And all the receivers that are out there bust their butt. Uh, but when you lose guys like Brady uh, that to bring such a great presence to the offense. When you lose a guy like Ty that was off to a really good start, uh, it's hard to say. We've got to get those guys back, and you've got to start going to work in January, and um, you get those guys back into it and see you know, exactly where that uh, ends up going to in terms of the passing game. But just want to win whatever way uh, it takes to get done. And you know, I'm, Kyle knows on his end just like I know. And, you know, when you're playing quarterback, I never. It's it's rare to have the kind of tools that he has as a runner, but in order to be able to, to lead your team, and there's going to be games when you're going to have to be able to throw the ball. It's not that far away. It's really not. It all comes down to confidence. It all comes down to footwork and uh, being able to be consistent that way. And then he can't do it all by himself either. Uh, and so being able to get um, you know all guys back that have been you know that missed the year, and that that'll also help in that way too. Is there a commitment to Kyle in the future? Uh, listen, he did a great job. Uh, he did a great job. You know, obviously, uh, fired up about what he was able to do for six weeks. Really, am. Uh, fired up a lot to build on, a lot to get better at. Uh, and, and going back and before the Toledo game when the decision was made, I don't know if, you know, obviously the things that we can get cleaned up are the turnovers, the things that, you know, when, you, when you have an opportunity to, to have the ball in your hands on every single play, it's at a premium uh, being able to take care of the ball and eliminate those. And he can do that. He can get that done. And um, you just got to keep working on it, though. So I uh, love everything I was able to see about him. And, um, you know, we'll just attack it and, and uh, obviously get started with the offseason process when that time comes. Um, there's also been kind of a lot of people, and you kind of mentioned some of the negative stuff on social media. Um, people kind of do want to see a change in the program, coaching or something else. Do you have a message to those people? Yeah, I can't control that, man. I just try to, to be the same guy every day. I just try to go to work. Uh, and give everything I have. You know, I know it's a business that you're judged on wins and losses. I understand that. I don't control that. I'm just going to give everything I have every single day and try to be the same person, try to raise men in the locker room. And I know we're judged on wins and losses. I hope people want uh, to win, and I hope they take it personal. That tells me that they care about Ball State, and I want that to be the case. And so I'm just going to do everything I can uh, to do my best anytime there's a loss, it starts with me. It's my fault. I understand that. Uh, that's part of this profession. That's part of doing this, uh, you know, for a career. And so um, I don't control that. I can't control that. Um, all I can do is, uh, you know, try to bring my best stuff every single day to the coaches and continue to try to develop our guys and emphasize the things that it takes to be able to win football games consistently. Right. Thanks, guys. What are some of the emotions that come with this? I see you shaking your head up there. Um, what are some of the emotions that come with a game like this to end the season? Uh, first, I want to ask, is it OK that I keep my ski mask on? Is that OK with y'all? I'm just not ready to take my full attire off. Uh, but uh, the emotion that come with it is a very sad just because you know, we wanted to go out with the win for our seniors for their last game. And also, uh, it's a, it was a rivalry game for the Red Bird. And, uh, Watching them 
uh, take it to the locker room. Uh, it's just a hard feeling. Who are some of the guys on the team who are seniors who are, who are leaving the program that you're closest with? Uh, Sydney Houston, uh, Cole Pierce, uh, Red Potts. You know, I could go on and on. Tavion Woodard. It's a lot of those guys that's really going to hurt me in the program. You know, it's like 20 some of them. So taking a big hit. You said you're close with Cole. Um, what was it like for you, like on the sideline, watching him? make that interception at the end of the game? Man, I just thought it was meant to be once that happened. You know, we were going to win because, you know, a guy like that making a big play, you know, it just – that just seemed like a movie right there in itself. So, it was a tough loss. What were the – like, what, were, what was going through your head when you saw that Jackson's kick was blocked after that? Uh, we made him do too much work offensively. I mean, we only scored one touchdown today, so, you know, we put him out there too many times today, quite honestly, and he's young as young as ever. So uh, we got to execute more offensively. I think that holding call wasn't a holding call, and they got bailed out. But, uh, yes, he's going to be a good kicker in the future. Obviously, the season's over, so you can't look at it as to the next game, but – what do you think the offense like could have done better maybe today? You said that he was on the field too much in the offense and didn't score any touchdowns. What do you think right. you guys could have done better? Uh, we got to win the turnover battle. I mean, it's been the story of the year. You know, uh, we got a lot of turnovers this year, and that's not winning football. So next year, we're going to emphasize ball security in all fashions, and we're, we can't give no defense, no defense life. And that's what we continue to do. And we've been in tight games and tight games, and we, we're not winning the turnover battle. So we got we to gotta stop that. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, tough loss, but you did achieve the goal that you set out for, at least personally, this season. Um, 1,000 yards on the season, you know, over 100 yards today. Um, kind of seeing all of your work pay off, how's that feeling? Uh, it's definitely a, a good feeling, but I really can't feel good right now because of the loss. So, uh, but, you know, for my old line to get me there and pave the way on the heavy box we were seeing today and just get those tough yards all day long, uh, I'm so thankful for that and for the coaches for feeding me again. And you said earlier in the week when we talked, like, if and when you get to 1,000 yards, it's not just yours, it's for the offensive line as well. Yep. It was all of ours today. So thank you to my old line. And, you know, I'm going to continue to remember their names forever and cherish them. For sure. You know, you talked about taking care of the ball with the offense, right? Um, but I guess, like, for next year, do you feel like the offense needs to be a little less one dimensional to be, like, consistently successful? Uh, yeah, I think that was a good recipe when I was at Kent State. Uh, we we threw a lot of deep shots and completed a lot of deep shots. So if we do that some a little bit more next year and run the ball just as much, though, at the same time, uh, we can be anybody in college football, in my honest opinion, if we uh, just hit a couple more passes a game and uh, just continue. We got the recipe also was just running the ball more. You know, this half second half of the season, we we were just you you could know we're running the ball, but you can't stop it. So we got to keep doing that though. That was a good recipe also. Um, I guess just last thing, um, first season at Fall State, kind of in the books now. Um, do you have any like closing thoughts on the season as a whole? Um, that I think that we continue to grow. We seen we have so many wounds, you know, that the growing wounds that we went through, just so so much things, so much injuries we went through. Uh, we did a lot of starting changes and stuff like that. But I feel like we got the recipe now. We know how we're successful. We know who we're successful going to. So we got to continue to build off that and grow every single day. And the, from the first game to the 12th game, have the same recipe that is going to make us successful. And that's pretty much it. Thanks, Coach. All right. Mr. Kyle. Kyle, um, obviously that was, a, that was a tough one for you guys to end the season. Um, 
I know it might be hard to look back on the whole thing right now, but how do you just feel like you're going to just kind of, can you describe just the, the 2023 ball state football season to you? Uh, you know, this team was, was, was real resilient. You know, uh, we had every reason to tuck our tails and give up at like the halfway point of the season. But, uh, you know, we we came to work every day and, and fought, you know, no matter what the, the situation was. And even when uh, even when we lost and uh, we knew we weren't going to be bowl eligible, you know, the guy still uh, showing up and not complaining about nothing. And, and, you know, that's, that's all you can really ask for. For you individually, you know, these six starts, you know, part of what you dreamed of being a college quarterback. Um, how do you just evaluate what the experience was like? Um, it was fun. You know, uh, I felt like I felt like you know I put I put the team in in a in a position to win every week and uh, you know there's definitely uh, there's there's a lot of places that I need to get better at and uh, you know most of it comes with experience and now I got that experience you know I gotta uh, capitalize on it and just uh, take this into the off season and, and get better and come back a better player. Yeah, I mean the passing game like the last couple. Weeks wasn't as strong um, today. Two interceptions are led to points. You know, what, what kind of led you to make those mistakes today? What were you seeing? Um, I wouldn't say, you know, anything led me into making those mistakes. I just, uh, one of them I thought I seen man, and uh, I didn't see man. And, you know, like you said, that's atrocious. So it just can't happen. But you did rush for 100 yards today, first quarterback ball state to do that since uh, 2000. Um, you know, and you and Coop obviously made a pretty dynamic rushing duo, and you did it against the Max best rush defense. Um, you know, do, you, do you feel like if, if you were to come back here and, and you want that same kind of scheme uh, to be run heavy again, because obviously it, it led to a turnaround the season? Where else would I go? No, I mean, like, if you're back in the spring and you guys like commit offensively to being a run team rather than what it was to entering this year? Um, I, don't, I don't really, uh, I guess, you know, you're saying if I leave and all this stuff, you know, I don't really have an answer for that. So do you, do you feel like a commitment from the Whatever the, the offense is, I'm going to handle it however they need me to handle it. Obviously, um, you had that touchdown that got called back. Um, Coop seemed to think that it wasn't really a holding. Um, what, are, what were the emotions for you? Like, it was very much a roller coaster situation where you thought you had the touchdown and then it gets called back. Yeah, um, I was on my way back to the huddle and I seen the flag. So, uh, you know, we can't we can't dwell on it. You know, uh, I'm not sure if it was a hold or not, but you know, I, I am sure that. There was other plays in the game where we probably got away with a hole. So, you know, just because that play was a touchdown and, yeah, it hurts. But, you know, uh, offense, we got to be ready to come back and, you know, punch it in no matter what happens. And, uh, yeah, it sucks that we got the holding, but, you know, there's, there's nothing we can really do about it. Well, so hadn't had two rushers with over 100 yards until or since 2019 before today. Can you just kind of talk a little bit about the dynamic between you and Coop on and off the field? Yeah, um, I'll start with on the field first. Um, you know, it's 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 hard for defenses to stop because you know we both so dynamic and um, you know he he runs hard, real hard, uh, all game long. No matter if it's a two yard run or a thirty yard run, you know he gonna he's gonna finish them hard. And uh, you know it's. Uh, that's that's exciting to see, especially when you know he's the littlest out there. So to see him uh, fighting for those extra extra yards and stuff, uh, you know, it pushes me to you know run harder because you know I see him doing it, and there's no reason why I can't. And uh, as far as off the field, um, you know, Coop came in from Kent State. He's been great. You know, uh, just being a being a leader in in so many different ways. You know, and uh, now that now that. Uh, 
later in his in his first season, you know, he he become more vocal and um, you know, I I can I can go to him any any run play, ask him, you know, what 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 he saw or like what what do you think I should do like even today, you know, we just we just help each other out and uh, you know bounce each, bounce ideas off each other in the run game and uh, try to make each other better. When I was talking to you and your mom last month, talked about how one of your goals for this season was to become a prolific passer, and I know that you're not satisfied with where you're at. Mm -hmm. Is that probably the top of your priority list as far as things to work on in the offseason? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to. Get this uh, this narrative out of here that I can't throw the ball. So uh, you know that starts with me, and uh, you know um, just continue to be better and uh, separate myself. For sure. And Coach New said the biggest thing that comes with that in his mind is footwork. At least um, is that something that you agree with and you feel like you need to work on as well? One hundred percent. Footwork and just. Uh, you know, bringing bringing everything to the party, I would say, as far as like throwing the ball. You know, there's uh, sometimes you know I can I'm throwing off my back foot or it's just not using my legs in in the past. And you know that that comes with time, but I'm definitely gonna clean that up, and I can't wait to get back out there. As Kyle steps away from. Day overall, like for you, I, I guess at the start, you know, final cardinal walk, then you get honored with your family out in the field. You know, what was all that pregame stuff like for you? Yeah, this this whole weird week has just been uh, really bittersweet. Um, obviously, I've had a long career here, and there was a lot of emotions going on, um, a lot of memories I've created that I've just reflected on throughout this week. Um, obviously, the last of everything, uh, last cardinal walk, last Tuesday practice, and everything. Um, so. Uh, it was just really, really bittersweet throughout the whole entire week, um, but it, it's just I'm so proud of, of of the defense. I'm so proud of the offense. I'm so proud of this whole entire team for uh, sticking with it this whole entire year. Obviously, it hasn't been, it wasn't what we what we wanted, but uh, we hit rock bottom and, and the guys stick together and they uh, bounce back and we started playing really good ball towards the end of the season. Um, you and pretty much everybody have talked about like the resilience of this team. The year, how have, like how have you gone about like making sure that everybody stays locked in and resilient throughout the year? Yeah, that I mean this my my resilience and, and just consistent. I mean this is just a whole long process of, of seeing the the older guys uh, do what they do from uh, the seasons prior and just throughout my whole entire career of I've said it before of just learning so many different things, uh, learning how to work with different. Uh, teammates, because we're all from different backgrounds, all types of different people. It's a huge team, so um, I just continued to learn throughout my entire career. And um, obviously, this is my last go around, so I kind of just put it all on display this year. And just um, I, I, I was com comfortable with pretty much everyone on this team. I knew, I knew how everyone worked. I knew how to get everyone going, and I just, I just stuck with that throughout the entire season. Um, Always try to be a, a positive individual for this team, especially on the defense as a leader. Um, and I just continue to do that even when we are losing games, even when we are winning games. It never really changed throughout the season. Um, and to you know, one of the statistically best defenses in the MAC, um, Coach New called it you know, the strength of this team. Um, were you, do you feel like the defense this year met or even exceeded expectations? Uh, I mean, Coach Stock, I mean, has done a great job uh, every single season that he's been here. He, he's really um, brought this chemistry and this culture on this defense to a whole other level. Um, the, what any defense I was a part of in high school um, and even, even, even prior to that. Um, but we just continued to get stronger as a, as a defense. Um, and I don't really think about the expectations and whatnot. I kind of just go out there and play every week and, and demand the best out of every single teammate. So I don't really think about years past. I don't really compare defense from this year, the last year, or the year prior. Um, I just, I'm so proud of these, uh, these defensive guys and, and how we stuck together, like I said, and just continue to get better every single week. 
Um, there was a lot of, of course, there, we had a huge, in, a lot of injuries this year, and uh, people stepped up, and I'm just so proud of all those guys that stepped up and um, prepared for, for that time of, of when they had to step up, and they really executed their job and did their job at a very high level. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> probably, you know, the most standout play of your season this year, that interception at the end of the game. Um, what did you see on that play, and what were the emotions that came with it? Yeah, they were, they were kind of running that play. They, they ran that play multiple times throughout the game, and I was kind of baiting him sometimes. And then um, really it's just, it just the play call and, and what I did, I triggered a little bit more, and it just ended up perfectly. Um, and I was there, and I just made the play. Um, obviously crazy emotions on that play um, to put us in, in, in that position to go uh, try to win the game. And, and uh, the biggest thing for me is just all the support on the sidelines for my teammates. Um, I know how much they care about each other and care about me and love each other, and it was just another uh, testimony of how close this team, in, uh, team is and how close this defense is. Yeah. And then, you know, conversely, when the offense isn't able to capitalize and the field goal gets blocked, um, winning a game like this is so close, so many different shifts in momentum. You know, what were the emotions that came with that as well? Yeah, obviously not, not the best emotions, um, but uh, this game isn't uh, – that play didn't. One play doesn't determine the outcome of this game. Uh, there's there was other things on defense we could have done better. I'm not gonna uh, knock any of those guys in that field goal unit for getting blocked. It's football. They made a good play, um, and and that's really that. I mean, we we kind of reflected. Coach Stock brought us up uh, again. Told us how much he cared about us. Told us how much we love each other, and uh, we just stuck it together there for that last drive. And and it is what it is. Yeah. Um, how many, I mean, I'm sure you don't have the actual number, but how much of your family was here today? Yeah, pretty much all my family from, uh, they're from Wisconsin, so that was a little farther, further drive. Uh, so they're definitely the further, uh, uh, furthest family that came for the game. But mom and dad's side uh, continued to support me throughout my whole entire career. Uh, and it just brought me so much joy to see them here today uh, for my last game. Yeah. Um, and then when we were talking on Tuesday, I just remember you said, I'm probably going to cry on Saturday. Um, has that happened yet? Yeah, it happened uh, probably for the first 15 minutes after that game for sure. But uh, again, uh, my teammates brought me up, uh, told me how much they care about me, told me how much they love love me, and uh, they really helped me out there too, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, being here for a while, man, um, do you have like a favorite memory or time you feel like you're going to most fondly look back on as a Ball State card? No, not in particular. There's just so many uh, great memories and experiences and things that happen throughout my entire career. Uh, there's not really, there's not really one that that sticks out. There's just so many of them, and I'm so blessed to um, be a part of this team. And 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 uh, and I just I just hope that I planted the seeds that I wanted to plant because um, obviously my time's up here, and I just uh, want the best for this program. Want the best for these coaches. Um, as my time has come, but uh, to answer your question, nothing in particular. Yeah, going off that, like any, anything, the guys that are, you know, younger guys are coming back, and do you feel like anything they really learned this season that they can carry over to, um, you know, maybe, maybe start a little faster next year? Uh, nothing in particular. Um, I've always emphasized on, on my relationships on this team, and I've always emphasized of planting seeds, like I said. It's, it, I mean, I. Throughout the whole entire offseason, throughout the whole entire my whole entire career, especially as I got older, I just continued to try to teach some of these young guys um, certain things, um, certain pointers to be better football uh, football players and just better men in general. Um, but now to answer your, I mean, there's probably a lot of things if if you would ask the younger guys of what I have taught them or or, or give them wisdom about. Um, but no, nothing in particular that. Uh, that will lead them into next year. I, I think there's just uh, lots of things that they can take throughout the season that we have talked about them as older guys. We have mentioned them, um, mentioned to them uh, throughout the whole entire off season and this season. Are you, are you plan on staying around the game? Or like, what are your, what's, your, what's next week? Um, I'm going to take a couple weeks after this season, kind of decompress. Had a long, long career here, um, so I'm going to. I'll talk to some family, talk to friends, and um, but no, I don't have anything. I don't have any plans set in stone yet.
Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.